One person was shot overnight during a home invasion on Keokuk Street near Mohican, according to BRPD. It happened at 1236 a.m. The victim is expected to survive. Your Friday forecast. It's a chilly December morning. Temperatures in the upper 30s and lower 40s. And with northerly winds, we have a feels-like temperature in the mid-30s. Today, increasing clouds, southeast winds, and a warmer high in the upper 60s. Overnight, mostly cloudy, patchy fog after midnight, quite mild, a low of only 62 tomorrow. Much warmer, a few scattered showers, breezy, a high in the lower 80s. Remember, we have a slight risk of severe weather tomorrow night into early Sunday morning. And now I'll give you a little traffic update center and see how things are moving this morning. From the first WFB traffic alert center, right lane is blocked on I-110 southbound at Hollywood. Backup start before the airport. Take Plank Road to Evangeline and then Evangeline to I-110 and you can get back on the interstate there past the wreck. Mayor-elect Sharon Weston Broom wants to start at the top with changes to BRPD, but it may not be as simple as making a switch. Her meeting with Carl Dabity to discuss leadership in the department will be critical, according to the Baton Rouge Police Union. The best case scenario will be for Dabity to step down. Otherwise, she'd have to show he was neglectful at his job. As for the next chief, Sergeant Brian Taylor with the Baton Rouge Police Union, hopes it's an internal hire. Someone from within uh, has a better understanding for the culture of Baton Rouge and like our members will be emotionally vested in the city. Broom says once she has the go ahead to move forward, finding a new chief is going to take at least two weeks. A major investigation into two Tangipahoa law enforcement agencies shut down operations for a while. Feds raided the Tangipahoa Sheriff's Office as well as the Hammond PD, saying they're responding to court orders. This apparently stems from an investigation into a drug task force. The Advocate newspaper says the task force is under scrutiny for allegedly selling confiscated narcotics and tampering with witnesses. Hammond's chief of police didn't offer much more. It's not my investigation, so it's like again, I was telling them it's a third party investigation. I'm not, I'm not at liberty to disclose what they're looking for. Uh, I'm privy to the investigation, but I, I can't discuss what it is they're, do, they're doing and all that. That's just being professional with those guys. Are you cooperating fully? Of course. Yeah, no reason not to. The advocate also says that two former members of the task force possibly connected to the FBI raid have been charged with stealing cash and drugs. Some good news for Edwin Edwards' family as he's finally heading home. We're told Edwards is now out of the hospital tonight and resting. He was admitted earlier this week after a battle with pneumonia. Louisiana's longest serving governor turns 90 next year. Still in the hospital but making remarkable progress is Deputy Nick Tuye. He's recovering at TIRR in Houston, Texas, where he's been for about a month now. Doctors dropped a bombshell yesterday saying that Nick is conscious and is exceeding expectations all around. That's huge considering he wasn't even expected to survive past July 18. Nick can see. Nick can hear. Nick is aware of different aspects of his environment. Nick understands language. Nick knows who he is. Nick knows where he is. He can identify that he is in Houston, Texas and in a hospital. Nick's family asks one thing, please keep the prayers coming. In the aftermath of the floods, one organization is feeling the love, the Denham Springs Animal Shelter. A GoFundMe account, along with money from the Petco Foundation and mail-in donations, added up to nearly $400,000. The money will go towards building a new cat room and vet center, both of which were heavily damaged by flooding. It would be a lot more peaceful for the animals whenever we test them for feline leukemia and all that and heartworms. The shelter is reviewing plans, and when that's done, they'll set a timeline for construction. The town of Jackson, Mississippi, has an energy problem, or rather an energy problem. Their solution? Don't pay the bill. As Marsha Thompson reports, it's nearly half a million dollars owed. This Jacksonian is fortunate. A street light illuminates her home and street. Everywhere else you go, everything lit up. You know, I'm serious. Amid fake news scandal. Facebook is now taking steps to protect you from false stories.
Facebook could be putting the brakes on fake news after a backlash following the election. Facebook says they will start flagging these types of stories to counter the growing problem. Facebook users will see warning labels on articles known to be false. That label will say, disputed by third-party fact-checkers. Users will also be able to click on a learn why this is disputed link to get more information. If your tree has been up since Thanksgiving, this is your reminder to water it. The National Fire Protection Association says Christmas tree fires are common this time of year. U.S. fire departments respond to hundreds of fires a year caused by dry trees. An easy way to prevent fires is to keep your tree well hydrated and away from heat sources. You can also purchase flame retardant chemicals to coat your treat with. More deadlines are approaching if someone's counting on your presence by this Christmas. If you want your packages by Christmas Day, then you need to order them as soon as possible. For FedEx, the deadline for standard ground packages is tomorrow. For UPS, it's Monday. And the U.S. Postal Service's deadline has already passed. You can also opt for the more expensive express options.